Hi, I'm Sharon. Welcome to the first Speakman New York Fine Jewelry podcast. And our guest today is our very first guest curator, Patricia Carobio de Carobio. She is the first female auctioneer in Christie's Fine Jewelry ever, as well as the former head of Christie's Fine Jewelry. And she is also the author of many books, including Bejeweled, which you can find in a link on this post. So welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having me. We're so happy to have you. Thank you. Um, so what we'll be talking about today, in addition to going through your curation, is a bit about your history. So I'd love to know, actually, what's the origin of your last name, Carobio di Carobio? So that I found out actually much later in life because my parents didn't share the beginning, really. And having lived always away from Italy, even so I am Italian, as you can hear from my accent, um, it comes from near Modena. My great-great-grandfather was uh, the banker of the Duke of Modena, and so the Duke of Modena at some point knighted my great-great-grandfather. And the rest is history. And that means you are a countess, That's correct? right, exactly. Do you use it? Very seldom, but actually I like it. So cool. I don't say I'm Countess Patrizia di Carobbio, but I feel it in some way. I love that. Well, and, and part of why we're here is to talk about what is the feeling that jewelry gives you? What is the feeling that a title gives you? What does it mean to collect and be inspired by very beautiful things? So maybe we'll start with what brought you to Christie's. What brought me to Christie's is one day I woke up, I was maybe 23 and a half, and I said, hmm, I want to work in jewelry. So I had gone to college, I had studied political sciences, I knew many languages, and my father thought that I should be an interpreter. I said, this is not for me. And I woke up one morning and I said, I want to work in jewelry. Well, when you don't have a family in jewelry, it's a little complicated to get into jewelry. And I said, ooh, but if I work for an auction house, I don't have the problem, I don't have a family business, I don't have this, I don't have that, and that's how I started. And I said, I will learn. And I didn't know if I was then going to move on to other things or stay in the jewelry. Oh, stay, no, no, stay in the jewelry, I think I knew. But stay in the auction house. Mm -hmm. And 11 years later, I decided I was going to move on and become a trader, a precious stone trader and, uh, and an invented jewelry trader. And were there many women in your class at Christie's? No, very few. And if you really want a cute story, actually I started to work at Christie's in 79 in London and at the time they didn't want any women in the jewelry department. Why? I never found out that answer, but huh. I that was the answer that through the grapevine I heard. How did you break in then? Why do you think? Because you I came in? to work in New York. Ah, okay. And in New York that was not a problem. Interesting. So actually what brought me to New York was I wanted to work for Christie's in the jewelry department and I saw that, that mm. my, my sort of way in would be to be in New York. And after you arrived, how long was it before you transitioned into being the first auctioneer? Probably two or three years. Okay. Yeah. And what was the first auction like? like everything else. I mean, I studied small, so it was not intim too intimidating. Obviously, it's very different today than it was then, but um, I was happy. And I'm someone who normally thinks about 22 things at the same time. And when you are an auctioneer, in that moment, you can only think about what's going on right in front of you. Otherwise, you lose track. You even lose track by doing that. So. It's a good exercise. What's interesting, I think, is that we're talking about the mid-80s when you were an yeah. auctioneer. There still aren't very many women who are prominent auctioneers. Why no, do you think few. that is? Because probably still is a... Remember, Christie's and Sotheby's, which are the two main auction houses in the world, were British. Yeah. And uh, I think that makes a difference. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I, I don't have... I mean, I'm... Uh, I never asked myself the question, so I don't know. That's my answer today. Maybe tomorrow I would have a different answer, but mm -hmm. that would be my answer right now. How do you think that the auctions have changed since you were running auctions? Very different. But not in the auction process itself, which is always the same. But they are much more curated. They are becoming retail stores when actually, when I was there, it was very different, very different. 
I, when I think about what went through my hands over the years and what I see today, mm -hmm. it was no comparison. So many more beautiful, sexy, attractive pieces than there is today. Have you seen pieces that you auctioned oh, come yeah. back? Many times, mm -hmm. many, many times. How many pieces would you say you auctioned personally? Phew. Five, six, seven thousand, I don't know. Yeah. So when you transitioned from being an auctioneer to heading the department, yeah. what would you say your focus was in building the department? No, but my transition, I mean, I, being an auctioneer, it's only a very small portion of my time. So I was number two in the department for mm -hmm. a long, long time. So when I transitioned, it didn't change neither my auctioneer. It, what it did change is probably my respons the level of my responsibilities, which is I had to produce auctions. I'm not sure how many people know, but what does it mean to be the head of fine jewelry for Christie's? It means uh, produce. Produce meaning? Um, produce uh, is uh, find the jewelry and, find the pieces. and sell it. Because, uh, and always I would say, the, the be, you know, there's easy things where, and I w if I advise someone to put something in an auction to sell, I would say, give it for a very reasonable price and then the right price will be established. But when you compete, sometimes that's not the case. And so how do you establish a price that you think can still uh, be reasonable enough to attract enough people, mm -hmm. but then be high enough that the seller wants to sell it? Sure. You know? So how to attract that and keep a balance. How do you feel about the big celebrity auctions, which has been such a huge trend? I'm fascinated. I mean, the first one was the Duchess of Windsor. Yeah. That was still in my time even, so we didn't have it. But that was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> and the quality of the jewelry was, was amazing. amazing. But I would say even Liz Taylor, much closer. Yeah. The quality of the jewelry was also pretty good. Yes. I, I don't think it was bad at all. I think it was actually very high. And I even discovered those uh, on a bracelet. She had this gold and actually ivory mm -hmm. bracelet, and they were the tickets to the opera. Really? Yeah. Oh, when that's you had cool. a box, you yeah. had a number instead yeah. of having a ticket. Yeah. I never knew that that's before. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, when I was doing my research for the heritage of the houses that are in our collection, they almost all have some connection to Elizabeth Taylor. Yeah. She was I a mean, huge patron. She was a huge patron, particularly Bulgari, but all yes. of them, because then the pearl was remounted yes. by... Exactly, all was of them. By, by Cartier, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So when you think about the pieces that you wear, so for example today, Patricia is wearing from our collection, this is a David Webb coral and uh, nephrite necklace set in gold, and these are Paloma Picasso earrings of amber, and you have no, I don't have any earrings. We'll, we'll put them later or here. Hey, I can borrow one now. from you. Yeah, so I'm wearing um, this no, is. I want this one. You want this one? <laughs> okay, fine. Um, I'm wearing. I said I would not wear a diamond ring on my middle finger only if I get married again. So I'll wear them on my pinky, but not on my middle finger. I'll wear a diamond yeah. on any finger, mm -hmm. on anywhere I on said. my body. I uh, love them. I love diamonds, but I wear them on my pinky. All right, so this one is a magnificent ring by Verdura. Very it's cool, right? really cool, And it goes right? with the color of my dress. Yes, and I, I felt it also was good with my outfit. Yeah, it right. goes with everything. Uh, what I like is the idea of taking these pieces and mixing them up in a very different absolutely. way. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm not a big fan of sets. Yeah. Which is, I will even buy a set, but I'll often break up the set. Yeah. Because I think to have just this all the same is maybe then too much and maybe doesn't show enough imagination. <laughs> and then if you can mix the sets, you have many more sets. Exactly, exactly. And one of the things that we want to do and the reason why our tagline is the joy of luxury fine jewelry is that we want you to play. So That's the right. idea is you have these pieces, they're very, very hard to hurt, if not impossible to hurt. Mix them up wear them in different settings, wear them in different outfits in unexpected ways. So in a moment, we're gonna go over to the cases and actually look at some of Patricia's curation. Um, but before we go, what's your favorite stone? So it's funny, someone asked me the same question yesterday. And I said, if I have all the money in the world, 
probably what I would want is a very fine Burma ruby mm. and a very fine sugar loaf cabochon cashmere sapphire. Mm. If I don't have all the money in the world and my budget is more normal, if we can speak of normal when we speak about fine jewelry, I would pick a diamond mm. because it gives me a great pleasure and it doesn't have to be as great to give me that pleasure. Fair enough. Voilà. I mean, a, a diamond for me also, I think the, the fingerprints in a diamond, the inclusions are unique. They're literally like fingerprints. And the idea that the earth produced this carbon form over hundreds of millions to 2.5 billion years and that each one is unique. It's just a lasting miracle. Okay. So this ring, for example, is the house of René Boivin. It's 1925 and it's an incredibly beautiful, what we call an old European cut mm -hmm. diamond. What I like about this one is that um, the founder, uh, René Boivin, had actually passed away. This was run by his wife, Jean Boivin, and her first employee, uh, or primary employee, was a woman called Suzanne Belperon, who went on to become another one of the most famous jewelry designers in history. So actually, Madame Belperon. Ma Madame yeah. Belperon. And it's two really significant women in the history of fine jewelry. Which and there's I think, not so many. There's not so many, exactly, right. which I think is really, really cool. And I think this piece looks as modern today as 1925. You can wear it as a ring, you can wear it as a pointer, you can wear it as a middle, you could wear it as a pinky. I'd love it on a man with a pinky, with a suit. I think it would be so chic. It'd be cute on you. Um, and, you know, I'm wearing also a very interesting bracelet with lapis and gold. I think this can go pretty much Any, with anything. Anything. Right? And I mean, even with other, just gold bracelets. Just a whole row, which we can go over in a minute and look at those. Um, and then the earrings I'm wearing are David Webb. They are rock crystal and gold. What I like about these and what I like in general about mixing it up, I have pierced ears, but these happen to be clipped is that you can wear them with anything. So I would wear these with a t-shirt and yeah. jeans. I definitely wear them when I'm giving presentations like today because I think they're fun and they're happy. And, and they're, they're really, not so big. And they're not so big because I'm a shrimp. So for me, a smaller earring works really well and probably reads bigger on camera than it is. But I think this looks good on pretty much everybody. Yeah. Right, it's I mean, universally that's flattering. easy, exactly. Yeah, it's easy. And these earrings are probably from the late 60s, yeah. early 70s. What I love about these is they, they make a statement. They, you see them, but they're actually really light. They are light, they are comfortable, and I think they are, what I would say, a little funky. Mm -hmm. And I like funky. I, and I like funky combined with other things, but otherwise it's, life is too short. Exactly, and, and what we're gonna talk about now is the pieces that we have in the collection, a few that we think represent phenomenal, iconic, interesting ways to mix it up, things that we'd love for you to try and borrow and enjoy and really get your feedback on how you like to wear them. But I would add one more thing, yeah. which is, for me, the great thing about being able to borrow is that you can be daring. Okay, you may think that long, necklace looks bad on you, by example. Because I hear a lot, oh no, I cannot wear long, I cannot. Try it. You don't like it, send it back. then you, you, can send, you can wear it once and send it back. You don't like long earrings, but try too, you don't know. So this gives you the opportunity to really try out and see what looks good on you. And sometimes change your style, or at least attempt to change. Because otherwise, you have, as you have in your closet, you may find always the same thing. You, you just give something away and you say, oh my God, I bought exactly the same. So with jewelry, which is more expensive and therefore the investment is bigger, try, borrow, and then maybe you'll decide that this is something you cannot part with and you will buy it or you will buy something similar, who knows. Bravo. That's exactly how I would like everyone to feel That's about right. the joy of luxury fine jewelry. Yeah. Experiment, enjoy it, let it be really fun. That's right. Let it rip. Love it. Yeah. What I would really love to start with is um, 
looking at some of these bracelets, if you have, for example, purchased a set and you're an executive, you want to give talks and you might wear this necklace mm -hmm. with the matching bracelet. Yeah. But if you want to mix it up and you want to be a bit different, yeah. what else would you put with these pieces to make it just a bit more unexpected or fun or different? So let's start with the necklace, right? And I would wear the necklace with a pair of earrings. Oh, those are fun. So those are aspres. This I think is verdura. Exactly right. And maybe that's it. If I don't want to be too bold, and you know, also you don't want to overwhelm people either, and you want them to focus on what you are saying, not only on what you are wearing. Mm -hmm. But if I had to do something, I may wear this with this. I think oh, this. I love, I love this. Really funky, really unusual. Yeah. It's a cultured pearl. It's a golden cultured pearl and I would wear it on the pinky. And I'm crazy about pinky rings. I love them for men, women, non-binary. I think they're super chic. If you were going to put other rings on your finger with the pinky, what would you do? So, I didn't understand. If you're going to put other rings on either hand while you're wearing this as a pinky ring, what would you wear? I would wear another pinky ring. I like it. I would wear two pinky rings. Super chic. Uh. This is also verdura. I mean, actually, my grandmother used to have rings made in pairs, mm. and she would have one made for this finger and one for the pinky. Oh, I like and that. And not on the same hand. Yeah, that's super cool. But um, I would, I like pinky rings. So, so. I, I tend to do ring finger, middle finger, or I'll do ring, middle, and pointer. And if you want to do multiples. I think for me personally, I like mixing golds. So I think it's a lot of fun to wear one ring that's bicolor, one ring that's white gold, one ring that's yellow gold, and just have them all. In this case, I tied them in because they all have white diamonds. So for me, that is the link, but you don't necessarily need to, you can mix it up. Um, I think you can mix it up in any way you want. Yeah. That's really, again, we come back to try it out. Exactly. And be inspired instead of saying, oh, I bought it together, I have to keep it together. And I would say if we go to the bracelet here, yeah. you could wear it with the same earring. So you would wear the bracelet with like the this. Yeah, it'd be pretty. No, it's I would do that tangier. also if I had a jacket over a dress. You could then take the jacket off and you wear the dress with the bracelet and the earrings. It's Absolutely. super pretty for going to dinner. And if you wear a turtleneck, and I'm sure we'll speak a lot about turtlenecks because turtle we neck. both believe in turtleneck, yeah. but, and we're not wearing it because it's summer <laughs> right now. But if it was winter, you would see us with them. Both of us. And, um, but you could wear this even on top of, a, a of, a tur of, yeah. a, of the sweater, of the sleeve of the sweater. Yeah. I also like watches worn on top of the sleeve. I don't do it too much. Gianni Agnelli used to do it all the time, but I think it's really cool. Chicest man ever. Ever, exactly. Beyond. I would definitely wear it with these earrings. I would also wear this with these earrings. <gasps> you know, that, that is a collection that I think is worth talking about, is Marella Agnelli. Yeah. Amazing jewelry. Absolutely incredible. So one of the things that we like doing when we mix, I have like the, the inner Jackie O on vacation fantasy. So you can do the turtleneck with the long chain outside. I think Marella Agnelli, looking at the clothing and jewelry she wore, she was, uh, so modern, so perfect, totally inspiring, and she wore a lot of verdura. So when you look at the jewelry of Marella Agnelli, is she wore a lot of verdura. Mm -hmm. Because she was very good friends. Of course. I mean, Fulco was friends with Everybody. royalty <laughs> all over the world. Yeah, <laughs> And he came from a, actually a very important Sicilian family, so he had the right to, to do that. And I think for me, it makes me think of Oscar de la Renta. He was very, very good at understanding what women wanted to wear because they were his friends. He lived a lifestyle that allowed him to really see what do women want to wear when they go to lunch, when they go to dinner, when they're at an event. And similarly, Verdura traveled in the circles he was designing for. Yeah. Travel, literally travel. Li yes, yeah. exactly, it's literally. Not, yeah. And actually, travel is a good question. So when you're traveling on vacation and you pack your jewelry mm -hmm. wardrobe, what's your starting point? What would you say is the basis and then where do you add on? I think you start with, like when you start a suitcase, right? Uh, 
let's not get too confused. So maybe either you pick one color, so you pick coral and then you go with coral and you have coral and coral or coral and coral and maybe then gold and then it sort of all matches but also you can wear just one you could wear this twice around your neck instead of once and then you don't um, it's less confusing because otherwise what are you, it depends how much you travel you take a, a chain you can put it on a longer chain and then it's also di two different looks totally. it's short or it's long so you want things also not too fragile when you travel because you don't want to have to be so concerned about oh my god i cannot do this i cannot do that you want it simple you want it that it makes you feel good but also the lifestyle we have today is different from the lifestyle Marella Agnelli had hence everything is simpler everything is fast everything is now and uh, so you have to also go with the jewelry as of now that's how i think what about if you have a big event and you want to wear a statement piece? So let's say you have a big gown and you want to wear a statement coral mm -hmm. and diamond necklace. Yeah. How would you accessorize it to keep it feeling modern and fun? I probably would pay, put a pair of diamond earrings. I don't think I would go with coral earrings. I think okay. it's too much. So maybe I would use this. Those are nice, the deco. Those I think are nice. Yeah. I think I, I may use this, but I think it's a little too small. I think it's more for a younger girl, and I think who would wear this is maybe someone more in her 40s plus. Um, I could use this, but I still, my first choice of what I have right now here in front yeah. of me is probably this. And would you wear bracelets? Would you do anything and on the fingers? And then I probably would wear something on my fingers now if i have a diamond ring probably a diamond ring okay or if not a cocktail ring but i would say maybe more st maybe this I even so it's one. pearl and coral but i think it would work and then it's a big cocktail ring pretty and it's both you know this is coral it's organic pearls are also organic so it would be also a nice story to You're tell a theme yeah. i like it now, what if you're an edgier girl and you want to wear a big statement piece like this fabulous Stephen Webster necklace? This is cool. Huh? It's cool, right? Yeah, very. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. We, um, but we I don't think you need to be so edgy, actually. No? What would you do with I it? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. consider myself very edgy, but I, I think this looks you. great. Yeah. That's why, again, it comes back to That's try cool. it. Maybe something that you say, oh my God, I will never wear. And you see it on, and it's not so scary or intimidating as you could imagine. Should we swap your earrings? Yeah, I think that and this <laughs> doesn't go well together. So, and I get to play, which is Those fun. are fab. But you see, you could wear this, the necklace I have in my hand. Yep. And I, which I think looks really great. I love it. Absolutely love it. I think you look fantastic in this necklace. But I could even wear it. Yeah. With this. Yeah. I. Which I is actually much more. Uh, not at all the same era. This is much older. It's probably from the fifties, sixties, exactly something right. like that. Yeah. And. But again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Now you can always wear a diamond ring. You can always wear earrings. I wouldn't wear a whole set so maybe i would wear the necklace and i would wear a pair of earrings or i would wear the necklace and some bracelets like could be this yep those are fun those are deco you know those are deco yeah but i could do that yeah or i could wear maybe a more modern that bracelet or maybe even a white gold and diamond bracelet but modern yep or i could wear a pair of diamond earrings again i could wear i don't want to do this now but I could wear this Pretty. also. Yeah. And yeah. and that piece I think it's a really good point. It doesn't it doesn't restrict you. It's not necessarily no. No. a question of edgy exactly. or not edgy. But the craftsmanship on this piece, everybody should get a yeah. chance to have it out and enjoy I it. Agree. It's wonderful. So now you can take it out. Okay. So, so light. Play with something else. And beautiful. So what I would love to talk about next 
is pins. So we are crazy about pins for everyone. Yes, and, I'm crazy about pins. And I'd love to know different ways and more unexpected ways that you think pins could be worn. Okay, so my view, many different ones. First one is wear more than one, okay? So I would totally imagine wearing those two together or even like this. If I, I had that. a suit, maybe I would do like this. But I could even imagine like this. Yeah, that's chic. Super okay. pretty. So that's number one. Maybe two is not even enough. And I could do one, two, and then let's see. Let me find another one that I... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I could even do this. I love those. And then how do I do exactly? Well, I would have to start playing with it. But the other thing, and again, probably I don't have the right dress today to do that. But if I had the waist on this dress, yeah. I could even think of wearing them on my waist. Gorgeous. Or if I had a belt or a ribbon, could think of that. If I want to be really edgy, maybe I would do it on, the <laughs> on my hem. That's but awesome. that is already, and then I think it would pull your dress. So it's, the idea is great. I don't know how much it would be. If your dress has a lot of structure, you could. Yes, if yeah. my dress was a heavy, yeah. yes, I could totally do you it. You could definitely do it. Yeah. So if you have a very, um, if you have a, a very iconic design, mm -hmm. like this funk leaf, yeah. how would you mix it up to make it a bit different? I love this, for example. I like it too, but I would, I, would, I would wear three of them. I love that. <laughs> Oh, that's cheap. I would wear three of them. One, two, three, cascading. One, two, three, cascading. Yeah. One, two, three, like this. One, two, one. Yep. I love mm. them also in the V back of a gown. I think yes. it's really pretty. Yes. And you have to make sure you put it on well Securely. before you leave. And then you cannot lean on your Yes, don't back. sit on them. So you <laughs> mean you have to be straight the whole night, very straight. Uh, yeah. I can also see it on a man on the lapel of a... Very of nice a suit. suit, yeah. I love it. Yeah, Very super, nice or not so nice. Super chic. It could be also, and I could see this on a man's lapel. I really like it actually. Me too. I would think it's actually, I, I really like it. I really like and it. And this too. is Cartier, I believe. Yes, correct. I could also see this on a man's lapel. Yes. Absolutely. This is Hermes actually. And a little gift is the ruby and the eyes. Yeah. Beautiful. So, but I could also think about wearing this with this and this. I love them. Completely different. Yeah. And I would have fun. So it's really a way to also play and tell a story. It may be the story of the day for you. It may be your life. It may be your children. It may be whatever. What's happening in your business. I don't know. What I also find really interesting is the the breadth of the houses and the evolution of them. So these two pieces in completely different time periods are both Van Cleef, mm -hmm. right? It's an amazing range, the technique, the skills that are available. But also remember, all those houses used to use many, many different workshops. Yes. So even just that, and I love, this is my favorite things to always wear things oh, crazy about long. It. So you know, when and I, I think this is really cool. That one is part yeah. of my Jackie on vacation yeah, fantasy. Yeah. I yeah, just think it's, it's amazing. Yeah, on vacation is it's one, one way. One way. How would you mix that one up? Would you layer it? Would you leave it solo? No, I would leave it solo. I think it's big enough. Maybe I would wear earrings. Ilias Lalounis. Yeah, which would perfect be perfect. with uh, Jackie exactly. and Greece, right? Exactly. Um, maybe I would wear a big funky ring. Love. And then you've tied it together That's with the right. two turquoise. With the turquoise. Yeah. Um, Love it. And maybe I would wear just gold. So a pair of those. Pretty. Or I would even t take the top of this and mm -hmm. wear just the top. And just detach. Yeah. Nice. Um, and speaking of the, the pendants or, you know, when we look at discs mm -hmm. in general, how would you think about bringing these into your wardrobe? So two, three at a time, single, how do you like them? I always like a lot. Me too. At this point of my life. So I would wear them maybe one, two, three. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe at the same length, and I would wear it again longer, yeah. like this more. I would wear them on a bracelet. Mm, pretty. Like one, two, three. Yeah. Maybe not as necklaces, but as a bracelet, I would definitely like that too. This is also and then I would also wear just one. Yeah, super chic. But probably not me so much. One. How about bead necklaces? So you don't see them as much anymore, and I love them. Yeah, I think How would really you wear them? Well, okay, I really like them, and I would wear more than one. The only thing you have to remember, it's heavy. So I have friends and clients and colleagues who don't mind the weight and who say, oh, weight, no problem. Uh, I have others who would say, oh my God, I cannot carry this, it's too much. Um, but For if me, the I would wear a thousand, is, I love them. Okay, exactly. If weight is not an issue, look at this. This is really cool. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I've never seen kyanite beads like that. I think they're so special. So and this I, is kyanite on top and aquamarine mm, below. Or I would maybe put it this way. I think it looks better. Yeah, twisted. Yeah. I like it. Can we two connect? Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. They also feel great against your skin. I mean, there's something yeah. about the beads, stones, yeah. the beads themselves, that I think it's really a special experience. And they then I think the decision is how do you nest? Because at some point you have to nest. So I don't see right now, but yeah. I would prefer the dark below. and Yes, the light. you have the dark yeah. below. I think it looks yeah, better. Perfect. We talked about making traditional pearls yeah. less sweet, less formal. So first of all, let's not I think sweet and formal is also okay. And I don't think we should sort of poo-poo it and say, oh, everything has to be edgy. Everything has to be unconventional. No, there is something good also about convention. And actually, one thing that I'm amused by in this country is everyone is getting, or a lot of people are getting engaged with engagement rings. When I grew up in Europe, I didn't want an engagement ring. It was not it was not cool and now my daughters who i think are very in their minds certainly edgy and cool but they um they have engagement rings which i think is funny so now let's go back what can you do with this you can wear it traditionally which i think is actually very Giant. good or which you are but in a bigger size so that makes it a little less I like edgy, a little okay? scale yeah no you don't have to close this no no okay. So this you can wear and it's nice and it's traditional and it's simple. And if you want to wear something and sort of not take the scene, this is a good way to do it yeah. also. And sometimes you may be in that. Yep. So you might that, be in the mood. In the mood or in the situation where you have to yeah. not be edgy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So would you like to, can you mix it up? Yes, look, you can do it with yellow gold and have beads and beads. You can even do it those are too small, but as a concept, what about mixing pearls and hematite, which are two different grays? Love that. And you could also do gold with them. So, th and then you can start playing. And then pearls you could make longer and wear them long, or have a long strand and wear it long and short. So there is many different ways to do it. I love this crazy 70s Cartier yeah. necklace and these door knocker earrings. I just yes, think right. they're so yeah. much fun. And actually, I think they are perfect to be worn I together. I love them together. And I think this one, the, the Panther, I would also wear longer. Yeah. Not only, depending, actually, if you have the famous turtleneck that you wear in the winter, it would be perfect right Over there. It. Yeah. Or if you have a high neck dress or something like that, or a much more scoop dress. Otherwise, I could see wearing it like Love this it. and I could totally see those earrings and I don't think it's I don't think you have to wear much more you could wear this ring together I think That's this beautiful. looks very good I love that right? yeah I think it's really one two three you're yeah done. one two three you're done actually you're more than done how do you feel about long sautoir style necklaces so we yeah. have for example this moonstone yeah I like them a lot I like everything long so but I like it because this one is so... Day. I think yes. for someone very young, probably one is enough. I think for someone a little more... I don't even know how you say it, but... Uh, I think you, more. Yes, you would wear two, three, 
depending, you can do different lengths. You can do this one shorter and then longer and... Nice. Yeah. And I like that with just a white shirt open. I think yeah. it's super chic. But also on a dress like that. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah absolutely Or beautiful. on the famous turtleneck. Exactly. We love the turtleneck. We love the turtleneck. I think I'm making some noise. The oh, other okay. thing that I think is, okay, very iconic. You have seen many of them, but yes. I still think it's, a, it's this, um, the uh -huh. Alhambra from Van Cleef. And I think this can be really worn throughout the day, throughout the night, and throughout the time, which is, I can see one of my daughters wearing this, I can see myself wearing this, and I could see my mother, if she was still alive, wearing this. So I like also the fact that it's so through generational. So this one is a vintage chrysoprase. Yeah. How would you wear this so that it's not matchy-matchy? You don't want to do the, the bracelet, the earrings, and no. look super so predictable. So I would wear, again, so. gold earrings, probably. Okay. Or chrysoprase earrings, if I have. Yeah. And a, and a ring that has to be in the range. In the range, but it could even be this one that I really like. I like it with the pair. Yeah, I actually, I like it. For me, it. that's super yeah, chic. Yeah, yeah, and this is verdure. I really like it. Yeah. I love yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I like the ring, and I think actually you could totally do it. And Again, I it does. I mean, it depends. This can be for a much younger person. I think this you need someone a little more. You're not going to put this on a. 25 years old. I would. Okay. <laughs> I think as a pointer on a 25 year old, you go and you Instagram that girl because it's chic. Yeah. I, I just think this thing is That's epic. Right. I yeah. love it. It's like looking into, I don't know, what would you say? Like the most delicious fruit you've ever seen, right? <laughs> it's just ripe. It's so beautiful. So if we're thinking about mixing up bracelets and you have a super cool mm -hmm. animal figure, yeah. how would you mix them up? What would you wear them with? I probably would wear this by itself mm -hmm. on one side, right? Mm -hmm. Into it? No, I don't need to. Okay. Um, I probably would not even wear another bracelet. Maybe I would wear my watch on the other hand. Okay. But then I probably would wear either I would not wear other colors, so I would wear either something with diamonds. It could mm -hmm. be diamond chain or diamond chains, diamond by the yard. Pretty emerald eyes. Yeah, no. Aren't they beautiful? They are so pretty, right? Right. You could just. I could wear put this. Little emerald in there. You could wear an emerald, <laughs> but you could also wear this. Yes, that's gorgeous. But this is also. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it depends also the look you want to achieve. The other question I have for you is bringing back pearls. How mm -hmm. do you feel about modern ways to wear pearls? And I'm, I'm obviously wearing white yeah. ones today. Um, this to me is a little boring as it is, but it's very traditional. So I don't want to take away anything from that because I think sometimes le mieux est l'ennemi du bien, we say in French, and sometimes going very simple makes some sense instead okay. of always wanting to be edgy and this and that. So I think there is some merit to something like that. But if I was to mix it, I could consider even mixing it with Chic. these two gold necklaces. Yep. The other thing I would suggest is to have this made much longer mm -hmm. and wear it long or wear mm -hmm. it doubled, mm -hmm. where it gives you more freedom and also it's a little more easy going okay. versus this being a little more formal. Okay. That's have you, how would right. you think about mixing like these with a hematite? Do you like them together? Yes, yes, I like that. We've got a few pieces yeah. there that might be interesting. But I don't think no, the shape would the go. Neck. Yeah, yeah. But I, the color combination, yes, I think, I is perfect. It. Yeah. For me, gray and hematite, I think yeah, it's yeah, super chic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks cheap. very good. Yeah. And I love it with the gold. And it's you absolutely like it. yeah, beautiful, exactly. gorgeous. You could even yeah. wrap it around your wrist and make yeah, a bracelet. Yeah, yeah. Super pretty. Here we are. Super pretty. Yeah. I love that. I can't thank you enough for being our first curator of pieces for Beekman New York. We're just thrilled to have your insight and expertise and your creativity and frankly, your chicness. So, um, you know, we're going to be posting your suggestions mm -hmm. and your ideas. And if anybody is interested, we'll also post links to Patrizia's most recent book, which you can get on Amazon. Thank you. And what I would say to all of you watching this is please try, dare and play. This is a game you can borrow, you 
it's a few days and then you will see and you may discover parts of yourself that you didn't know before. I love that. Thank you.